Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason. This is the very first hypnosis session of 2018 or 2018, if that's how you say it. So, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year to all of you around the world and special happy new year to the person that bought me this t-shirt so what i thought i would do in 2018 is this is my plan i'm gonna trim my beard at some point that's another thing i've got my uh razor on charge so i have to wait for that to charge up before i can even attempt to uh, cut this grass of mine and I was thinking of maybe doing a daily hypnosis session which will be a you know every day throughout the year apart from those days when maybe I'm unable to for whatever reason That's kind of my plan. It's a very flimsy, vague plan. But I thought if I did something like this, then I'm not limiting myself to a specific subject or topic, um, ailment, uh, issue, whatever. I'm, my mind is wrapped around the idea, maybe you can join me with this, is that by spending this time together every day, we kind of connect. And that energy that's built up, that um, option to relieve, to release, to move away from things that maybe were uh, problematic, limiting in the past, to move away from that towards something that you would like to experience more of, whatever that may, that may be for you. Maybe it's more time with your family, better health, uh, maybe moving towards, maybe I mean moving away from and towards can be the same thing. You can have the same. It's like a sandwich. You can have the moving away from. Uh, let's say. A phobia. So moving away from uh, a fear of flying, maybe in a plane. moving towards enjoying holidays abroad or if you're in a big country like America holidays in other parts of your own country we do have planes going to parts of our country in, in, in England but uh, we also have trains you know so we don't see the point in flying to another part of the country but if you're in America it's huge or Russia or you know somewhere that you've got a big country because England is a very very small little island really compared to the world um, but we are pretty amazing here though oh yeah so um, that's kind of what I'm looking at so this these daily things that I'm gonna be doing will be kind of like a hypno chat that I've done in the past, uh, the daily hypnosis sessions I've done in the past, the hypnotic buffets that I've done in the past. So maybe a daily hypnotic buffet, or maybe, maybe I can be creative and actually come up with a new name for these. But I probably don't need to. 
it's ultimately just me talking each day you can relax you can just chill out you can close your eyes if it's safe for you to do so I only ever watch any of my sessions if you can safely close your eyes because I do get boring I will bore you it's, it's fine it's I bore myself <laughs> I do uh, if, if I get tired and I, I'm kind of struggling to sleep I just talk to myself and I'll, I'll doze off it's Andre my boy he's a ferret if you've ever met, seen him he's uh, I can send him to sleep by talking to him <laughs> it's weird I actually look at him and I talk and you see his eyes just closing it's not really hypnosis so much, just boredom. But then by focusing on my voice, it's a focus of attention, which is what hypnosis is. It's what you do with the hypnosis, it's what you do with that focus of attention. So you're focusing on my voice. It's what I do with my voice. It's the words I say and then the hypnosis, the magic, if you want to give it that word, happens within you, within your mind, within your body, your interpretation of the words, your responses to those ideas that I may suggest to you. Which is why I called my sessions hypnotic buffets before, because for me that's what it was, it was like a big buffet like being at a wedding or so you know a happy event where there's lots and lots of food maybe finger food um, I always think of just lots of plates of fingers when I think of that but if you think of it could be lots of different foods that you can test that's a good thing about it. if you've got a buffet there's unless you're a very very um, very picky eater you're generally going to find something you can eat. If you're vegetarian, there's going to be some vegetarian food, you know, whatever you like. There's also going to be stuff that maybe you've never seen before and you think, oh, that looks like poo. I'm not going to touch that, which is a good idea. If it looks like poo, don't put it in your mouth. That's my analogy, but my, uh, that'll be on my tombstone. Tombstone, headstone. I probably won't be buried in a tomb, will I? Headstone. So you have choices. So I'll be talking, and it'll be like a buffet. I'll be talking about some things. Some things that won't even seem relevant, maybe, to you or your life, or to me or my life, or to this situation we're in. However, have a little bit of faith that your unconscious mind can make use of that. I'll give you um, an example. When I, I used to be a counsellor. Technically, I'm still qualified, but I don't, I don't really see clients anymore. Not for the last three years, I think. Uh, so when I was counselling people, it came up in training and they said there was a lot of uh, questions about what happens if the client comes in, so the patient, client, you know, comes in and just tells a bunch of lies, just makes up a big bunch of stories um, that's not true. And that bothered some of the other counsellors. The idea that they would be sitting there, being all caring, trying to facilitate change or try to be there to you know, help that person or to be there for that person emotionally, to offer emotional support. And the idea that that person may be lying to them or making stuff up seemed to really upset some of those counsellors, including some of the supervisors. But it dawned on me that actually if someone comes to counselling they're coming for a reason they don't have to no one 
some people are forced into counselling, maybe drug rehab, you know, people in prison maybe are forced into it as part of their conditions of not going to whatever. So there are, there, it's a very tiny percentage of people who go to counselling that are forced into it. Most people are not. They go by choice. They choose to go. A lot of people that go to counselling don't pay for it. It's free. So it's, you know, that's not really relevant, but it's, it's a choice. It's a choice. So if they sit there and lie or make up stories, they're doing that for a reason. They're getting something out of it, which is maybe something that the counsellor will never understand, never know, and maybe it's something that the client, the patient, will never actually understand or know. They might not know why they're doing it, but they might feel better within themselves for doing that. So that's something that I just wanted to tell you about. It's got nothing to do with what we're talking about here. I just wanted to, no it has. It's the idea that actually, as a therapist, a therapist knows best. The therapist doesn't know best. Even the client doesn't necessarily know best or understand the workings. We don't understand the workings of the unconscious mind because it's personal for every single person. And we all have blind spots and they're blind. They're called blind spots for a reason. We can't see them. We can't see them ourselves. Just like if you're driving a car, you can't see what's there. There's certain places you can't see. Um, I saw this documentary and there was a, they were talking about the pedestrians and cyclists being careful when overtaking a lorry or driving on the inner side of the lorry on the road and the lorry driver or bus driver or whatever was just driving looking in the mirror couldn't see anyone and basically just couldn't see anything and they said okay well now get out of, your t out of the cab and there was about 30 people all standing there just out of into the in the blind spot which he could have run over or whatever so the thing is we all have blind spots and that's okay and sometimes they're blind they're blind for a reason blind spots for a reason and maybe the unconscious mind maybe the unconscious mind keeps that stuff to itself keeps it away from your conscious mind because it's protecting you and that's something to remember with your unconscious mind it's there to protect you not there to hurt you it's there to protect you and some of the things that your unconscious mind does for you is there to protect you but it might not be helping you which is where hypnosis can come in where someone like me with a big sexy beard could just talk to you and can have an influence on your unconscious mind give your unconscious mind an option to maybe make a change to maybe see things differently because when your conscious mind sees things differently your unconscious mind is also listening and watching and learning because if you want to make a difference in your life for a specific thing whatever it may be I'm being vague but I have to be because we've all got our own things in our life that we want to change or make changes about things that we care about we're all different so whatever that is for you that's personal to you you don't need to tell anybody what it is it might be something you feel embarrassed about But everything is, I believe, changeable as far as how we perceive the world. And it's about perceiving the world. It's not about... It's about changing how we see the world, how we experience the world, not trying to change the world to fit how we think the world should be. Um, 
because that is impossible. People have been trying to do that for years. You know, Hitler is an example. And many other people that didn't, that didn't cause problems for others, but have tried to manipulate the world and mould the world into how they feel it should be. And some of those people have completely transformed the world. You know? Medicine and technology and things like that. So it's... It's not necessarily a bad world view. I've just talked myself out of what I was saying. I've just changed my mind. But not everybody has the abilities to do those things. And I think most people that want the world to be how they want it to be are not prepared to do anything to make those changes. I think the most that most people will do is just complain and have a little tantrum because the world isn't how they want it to be. And let's face it, the world isn't really how any of us want it to be in reality. You know, none of us want to see famine, none of us want to go hungry ourselves or maybe have to struggle with bills and none of us want to perhaps get old and have hair grown out of our ears and you know, I never realised, I never ever thought when I was younger that my balls would become so long. <laughs> just, <laughs> but hey, that's a different subject. But just, the whole thing is, we don't, uh, I didn't, I'm not, you know, I wasn't, um, <laughs> I don't want to have saggy balls, but it's just the way it is, you know. It's not the end of the world. Perhaps I'd like to have more hair at the front as I've receded a bit. But you know what I did when I started receding? I shaved it all off. So I have no fear of going bald, no fear of being completely bald because I've shaved my head to the bone many, many times. Recently, about three, four weeks ago, I shaved my head completely. I know we can't always do that for everything. I know that's not a, um, necessarily a logical thing to do. Um, you know, if you're scared of heights, doesn't mean you should jump off a bridge. But you could do a bungee jump. You know, you could realize that actually we're safe you're safe you know someone said to me this is a while ago probably about a year to maybe even over a year ago maybe two years ago i was having a conversation it was in right here this person was sitting in my chair here i was sitting over there at the table and he said to me that he doesn't this is a really nice bloke i like him a lot he's a nice nice man, he's a bit older than me, not that much older, but he's a nice bloke. And I really feel for him, you know, generally. I got, I got respect for him. And he, he said he didn't really trust anybody. Found, well, not so much that, he found it hard to trust people. And I can relate to that. I can relate to having had trust broken, having also been the, the breaker of trust myself in at times, you know, I'm definitely not a perfect person. I've made mistakes, uh, most of which I regret, some of which I probably don't care about. You know, just some of which maybe I don't think about. Maybe some mistakes I don't realize are mistakes. Um, do we want to spend our lives thinking about what we did wrong or what we could have done differently? Um, unless that situation is likely to arise again, what's the point? I think back to um, this... I lived in this room when I was at college doing the counselling course and this girl moved in, a female. She was quite young, about 22, 23 or something, I don't know. And... I've never been the friendliest person when I live in a place. I just want, I like to be left alone 
and especially when you just got a little room, it was a very tiny little room, that was my only space in the world, you know, that I could kind of call mine. Um, and I, I wasn't very welcoming to her. It which was, I regret, it's, it's not, I wasn't horrible to her, but I just didn't really make any effort. And she was living in a room opposite me. And then she started, I think she got a little job at night and she was at college as well, and she she started having showers at like three o'clock in the morning, and I got angry. I really just like, cause it was waking me up because I was right next to where the shower room was, the bathroom. So I complained about her to the landlord, and we didn't really talk after that. Again, I, I just had a grump on. So I hadn't had any sleep and I was going to college and being a counsellor takes so a lot of concentration. <sighs> that one coming back to what I was talking about earlier, if I can remember it. My friend. Trust. Anyway, this about regret, I actually I remember I was sitting on my bed and I was watching telly and I heard some movement outside in the hallway. So I kind of I looked out the window and there was a van being uploaded stuff into it. I thought, well, what's going on? And I went over and um, the young lady, she was moving out. And I said, well, what's going on? Well, how come you're moving out? She said, well, she was from, I think she was from Africa, or some somewhere, Africa or somewhere like that. So again, I didn't take any interest in her enough to ask her. Um, and she had knocked on my door when she first moved in because she wanted to do a Skype to her, to her family. And I said, well, you can't use a laptop. The, the landlord's got a laptop you can use. Instead of just letting her use my laptop, I had a camera. Yes. Again, I'm not proud of myself. And she, she said, yeah, I'm moving to London because I've made no friends here. I don't know anybody and nobody's talk to me. Even at college, no one talks to me. And she gave me a hug. And then she punched me in the nuts. No, she didn't. She gave me a hug. And I realised there and then that I should have made, I really should have made the effort. All I needed to do was just talk to her. You know, just talk to her, just be be kind. It's all right making videos about kindness and making and being kind from a distance, which I think I probably am quite kind from a distance as far as doing the internet stuff. But what does that mean if I'm not able to be kind in person? Um anyway. This person, this friend, uh, he said he couldn't, had difficulty trusting people. And I said to him, well, I don't, I understand that. I don't really, I said, my perspective is you don't need to trust anybody. There's two perspectives I've got, two ways of looking at it. First of all, why do you need to trust anyone? If you don't trust any, you don't need to trust people, just take people for what they are and if they do something that is harmful to you then you wave goodbye to them and you don't have them in your life that's got my idea there but then there's another thing is actually it's not true is it the idea that we don't trust anybody or we can't put trust in people because we do that Every single day of our lives, we put trust in other people. Every time I get on a bus, I have to trust that the bus driver is not drunk. I have to trust that the bus driver knows what they're doing, that they can drive properly, that they're, you know, trust that they're not suicidal. You know, I have to, and everybody's got problems, whatever their job is. Every time you go into a supermarket, have to trust that the food has been packaged properly, that the 
the food is you know not gonna give you food poison we put our trust continuously in everyone not everyone but in lots of different people that we never even meet so if you can trust someone you've never met why not trust people that you know until there's a reason not to trust them in the same way if you have your milk I don't know let's say you go to a you get a kebab you eat a kebab you go to the kebab shop there has to be a degree of trust that that kebab is going to be cooked and you know okay but if you go into a kebab shop and you get food poison even if you've been going in there for years then I wouldn't go back to that kebab shop because that trust has been broken. But until that time, just have that trust. Every time you eat out, you're given trust. It's just maybe we don't think about it because we're too busy maybe talking to the person that we're with, too busy to think that actually, and we might actually be thinking, I don't know if I trust this person I'm talking to because I have trouble with trust issues. Well, actually, we trust people all the time. And I was quite pleased with myself because uh, when I said that, because I kind of thought about it a little bit in the past, that sometimes to verbalize what was a little peach of a thought, a little seed, a little idea that was there, it was quite nice to actually verbalise it and for it to, well, for me to make sense. Not, I wasn't surprised that I made sense, but it seemed to make sense. And it still does, and it, it stuck with me because I think because I need that to be, I need to be reminded of that probably quite often because my trust in people was in humans was probably I should say other humans was quite damaged at a very early age but not everybody is that person someone um, Whoever it is, if you're married or you were married or had a boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, and someone maybe cheated on you in a relationship, doesn't it doesn't make all men or all women cheaters. It's quite weird. When I think of cheaters, I think of the animal. And I think it's important. Imagine everyone running around really fast. I just kind of think it's important to notice the things that we say. I've got a friend who loves talking and saying old fashioned phrases. Um, and I, I pick her up on it. Well, I ask her about it rather, because it, I partly find it amusing, I partly find it annoying. Um, just I like I like creative use of language. I quite like to hear something that I've not heard before, um, which is quite nice if you meet someone from another part of the country or maybe from another part of the world, and they'll say a phrase that I've never heard before, and it's funny, amusing, and it might be the equivalent to just the same old crap that. I might say myself, other people say the same regurgitated sentence, like there's no smoke without fire. What about a smoke machine? You know, what about this? It's just those, that is such a limiting, <laughs> that's probably one of the most limiting sentences. It's always a statement, it's never a question, is it? It's a statement. It's not. 
there's no smoke without fire. And it's always there's no smoke without fire, which means if someone's been arrested for something, then they're, which just means that they're guilty, doesn't it? If there's no smoke without fire, it means they're guilty. And that's that's a very harsh way, harsh way to be. So I think it's good to maybe notice, and you might find yourself doing this because I, I know that I do. Notice the things that you say, not just to other people, but also to yourself. Because I think when you start noticing, first of all, how other how you respond or how you react to what other people say to you and then wonder I wonder how other people internally react to the things that I say to them maybe people feel put down by you and you don't mean to do it you don't mean intentionally to do that I used to be a, a right put down artist when I was younger. Quite often it was in response. So if someone verbally had a go at me, I would, I could match them, you know, 20 to one. I could, you know, they'd say something, one thing to me, I could just like a machine gun back at them with insults and rudeness. And I don't do that anymore kind of miss it <laughs> yeah. I don't do that anymore because it's if someone says something to you that hurt that you feel hurt by then why would I want someone else to feel the way I feel really knowing how it hurts and you know, another little phrase that people say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but no, words will never hurt me. I was taught that, and I'm sure a lot of you were taught that as kids. And it's a lie. It's an absolute lie. You can uh, make changes internally so that other people's words don't have uh, the effect that maybe they once did. But for me, the, the one thing that I've really got hold of, apart from having an itchy face, is, the thing is, where my moustache, part of my beard is, it's sticking up, so it's tickling my nose. I might get a curly one, I might actually curl it up to look even more ridiculous. So, something I notice, and I can't, for some reason, I can't stop myself from not correcting myself, but mid flow changing what I'm saying. So, here's a sentence really You make me feel, you made me feel this way. I can't say that to anyone anymore. Because the fact is nobody can make you feel anything or any way. They can't make you feel. Those feelings you have are from you. They haven't given you the feelings, they've triggered those feelings, but they're your feelings. They can't make you feel it. It doesn't mean that you're not going to uh, you shouldn't react or respond. Ideally, you don't react, but if you respond, it's natural. If someone says something horrible to you, whatever that may be, it's natural to respond with emotions internally. I don't think hypnosis or any kind of therapy is about turning us into robots without emotions because then well we're not human then are we 
imagine living a life where there's no feeling because if you block off the, the horrible feelings or the unpleasant feelings it's the same wall that stops the pleasant feelings from coming in and it also stops new experiences so that's the it's kind of like a a good a pleasant and unpleasant situation in a sense of in order to have more pleasant feelings you have to allow yourself to be there to experience unpleasant feelings as well which in itself isn't necessarily fun but something I learnt many years ago it's a choice you can block yourself off and not be hurt by other people or in your mind not be hurt by other people but not be put yourself into a position where what another person says or does affects you in uh, an unpleasant makes you know you feel unpleasant you feel unhappy you feel affected emotionally by what that experience was which is fine if that's how you want to live but you also won't be able to experience the pleasure because we can't separate the That's why when you have, uh, what are they called? I have these tablets for my, I've got a, a shoulder injury. So I've got these pain tablets and they've got paracetamol and I've also got um, another pain drug in it. A paracetamol is, you can only have a certain amount of paracetamol before it can cause damage to your liver and could cause a lot of problems. You can have as much as a drug, which is morphine basically, which is mixed in with it. So you take the tablet, but you can't, you can't control, you can't take the tablet and you can't control the percentage of what goes in. So you can't control it so that you only have the morphine and you get rid of the paracetamol because it all goes into your body. So you can't have one without the other with these tablets. And I guess emotions are a little bit like those tablets in a sense of, in order for you to experience the pleasure, you've also got, you need to ex be able to experience the other feelings as well. But these are just ideas, these are just thoughts, these are just stuff that you might wanna think about I wonder if you had your eyes closed the whole time I've been talking or if you've been enjoying looking at me, which would be really weird for anyone to enjoy looking at me. That'd be strange. So what are your, have you got New Year's resolutions this year? You got any plans? Anything that you like to do? I've been thinking about that myself I've just started a online learning code, learning how to program. Uh, I've been doing it for three days now. So I've been learning how to do code for HTML, which I learned in 2000, so I, I learned that before. And now I'm learning C, um, something else. Another thing, I've forgotten what it is, but I'm learning something else connected to that. So my plan is to learn more and to see where that leads me. Because I'm enjoying the learning part. I'd like to get more physically fit. 
get out a bit more, meet a few more people because I've not had much human contact really this year, last year at all. There's a, a few friends I've not seen at all for maybe a year or two. So I'm going to try and get out a bit more. Make more of an effort in certain aspects of my life. Again, I'd like to make one session, a video, every day. And also, this will be available as an MP3 that you can download on iTunes and SoundCloud. And all my videos and MP3s are available on my website, jasonnewland.com. This video I will upload to YouTube also, but um, apart from uploading the videos on YouTube, I don't have much activity on there. I don't really go on there and do anything. So if you want to contact me, then my website is the best place, really. Or Facebook or Twitter as well. But the aim of these videos or the usefulness of these videos, these MP3s, may not seem obvious at first. There's a progression. There is, this is a space, a safe space, where you can just relax, where you can just let go for a period of time. Where you haven't got to do anything. You really can just let go. And the ideas that I come up with or think about or make up or just ramble on about. As I said earlier, I like that buffet. Maybe it's something that you want to try. Or like a clothes shop. Maybe it's, maybe it's a bra you want to try on. Or a scarf or a hat. Or, you know, something, a bit of item of clothing. Maybe a pair of shoes. You might think, oh, I'll try that on. I wonder what that would be like to wear those shoes and actually realise that maybe I can have, maybe I am more trusting than I realise. Maybe that limiting thoughts in your mind about not being trusting is actually very limited and not actually true. Because, like me, you are much more trusting than perhaps you've thought about or even given it any energy at all maybe you're a lot more trusting and maybe the brain changes a bit you know the focus has a big impact on our lives on your emotional well-being and the way you see the world, the way you experience the world. But also the way you remember things, or the way you think about the future. Even though the future's not happened yet. Thinking about the future in a... Thinking about happy things that will happen. Thinking about things that you're going to be enjoying. Whether it be in 10 years or in 10 minutes. Something that you're looking forward to. It can change how you feel. Instantly. But I'm going to leave you on that. And I wish you a really happy new year. I'm going to have a cooked dinner in a minute. Because my friend's going to come up and cook me dinner. Which is lovely. So you have a brilliant new year. And I will see you tomorrow Andre sends his love but I've just given him a bath and he's hiding from me so um, I couldn't get him to say hello to you today but I'll try and get him to say hello another time you take care everyone bye <laughs>